let's talk goal setting. I don't know about you, but this time of year always inspires me to sort of reflect on the year that I've had and the year that is coming my way. I find that just a little bit of forethought and preparation at the beginning of my year, as well as the beginning of my day, honestly, makes a gigantic impact on how the year will go. And so why not take 20 or 30 minutes now to really think about your goals for the year, be them dance related or not. Today, I'd like to talk specifically about dance because that's our common ground here. And that's what I'm super excited about. And so I'm gonna lead you through a few ideas that will help you create achievable goals, help really set you up for success so that you have a much better chance of accomplishing these goals in the new year. Are you ready? Let's do this. So the first part of this goal process is really fun and creative. I literally want you to just get comfy, grab a drink, whatever kind you'd like, whatever inspires your inspiration and your creativity, right? And write. What would you do today if failure was not an option? What would you do today if money were no thing, right? What do you want in your dance for the coming year. I don't care if you think it's realistic or not, write it down, just go for it and spend like 15 minutes. The first couple of minutes might be kind of hard and you might feel a little stuck. You might have a few ideas and then you sit there. I encourage you to just sit in that silence, breathe and reflect and just write. So now I hope you have a page full of really delicious ideas. And if you don't, feel free to do it again at a different time when creativity is flowing more. But do not hold back on this. Goal setting is not the time to hold back. Not this first part. We're going to get more realistic in just a second. But right now I want you to just have at it. The sky's the limit. Have fun with this. So now you have a page full of fabulous goals for 2020. Now here's a step that most of us don't go through. And I feel like it's a very important step. So I'd like to invite you to take this st second step and let's talk about why those goals are important to you. It's all fine and well and good to say, you know, I want a stronger shimmy or I want to perform, you know, my first solo on stage. Those are great goals. They're fantastic. Well, they're pretty good. Actually, we'll talk about how to make them even better in just a moment. But why do you want to do this? So often the how ends up being the thing we focus on, which is important, but sometimes when the going gets tough, the how will not get us through. The why is what will drive us. Anytime you really want something, there is a why behind it. There is a feeling, there is a thought that drives that. And if you can hook into what that is, you will understand your goals much more deeply. You'll understand yourself a little bit better. And then when you're maybe not feeling like you'd like to follow through on these intentions you've set, you will continue despite that because you know why it's important to you. So, you know, maybe you want to perform your first solo on stage uh, because, you know, your teacher's been pressuring you to do it for the last five years, right? But maybe the bigger why is because you know that will instill in you a self-confidence that you do not yet have. And the only way that it's going to give you that is for you to just get out there and do it, damn it, right? Even though it's hard, but you know that once you've done it that first time, the sense of self-confidence and pride that you are going to have will be incredible and it will push you forward in your dance and also make every subsequent performance way easier. So that's the one example of a why that could drive you. And so then, you know, mid-year when the student night is approaching and you're feeling like you don't really have the time, you're too busy or too scared, you can remember those whys and they will continue to drive you forward. So now that we've looked at the why, we need to look at the how, yeah? So before we start to dissect hows, I want to talk about workshopping your goal. Right, so we all have goals and we just write down what came to our mind and that's exactly what I wanted you to do. Now I want us to take those goals and rewrite them in a way that's a lot more practical. If you have a giant page of goals, I invite you to pick maybe your top five or six goals 
the ones that really inspire you, probably the first few that you wrote down, and we're gonna workshop them. We're going to wordsmith them so that they are smart, right? So that they are smart. I want these goals to be specific. I want them to be measurable, achievable, realistic, and time sensitive. So let's talk about these five ideas. Specific is huge. This is the one that so many people miss, right? So we say, you know, I want to have better shimmies. Okay, like, uh, yeah, but, well, what does better mean? You know, does that mean that they're bigger, that they're harder, that you can do them for longer, that you can do them without sticking your tongue out? Like, what, is, what does that mean, right? So a, a more specific shimmy goal would be, I would like to be able to do a triplet shimmy for two minutes straight evenly without breaking a sweat, right? Like that's really specific, right? Or if we talk about, you know, I want to dance more often, you know, okay, great, more often than, than what? You know, what is your baseline? So if we're talking about practice, you know, I want to practice more often. Okay, that's, that's good, it's not specific. So specifically, I would like to fit in 90 minutes of practice a week or probably even better so you know I would like to have three 30 minute practice sessions weekly right like it, that doesn't have to be your goal but there's a way to make it more specific the more specific you are the more easy it will be to measure it so this is the second idea making it measurable if you can't measure it you'll never know if you made it there's nothing more frustrating than setting an amorphous goal and you never know if you got there, right? Then you have nothing to celebrate. Then you kind of are left with this like empty feeling of like, uh, you know, unaccomplishment, I guess. So you need to be able to measure this, right? So back to our, our shimmy idea, you know, being able to perform a triplet shimmy for two minutes straight without breaking a sweat, you can literally put on a timer and measure that. If you're talking about practice time, if your goal is to hit 90 minutes a week. Heck, if your goal is to hit 15 minutes a week, you can measure that. You can look at the clock and you can tell if you have created that, if you have accomplished that goal. So making it measurable. This is something that happens a lot of times when people are trying to get in shape and trying to get healthier and they say, I'd like to lose weight. Awesome. Most people would, you know, but like how much, how much, right? And then by when, which we'll get to. So measurable, we've made specific measurable goals. Achievable. So I always say sky is the limit when you're writing your goals, but then you have to have a moment where you make sure it's something that can actually happen like in this world. It's not something so pie in the sky. You want to understand the parameters under which you're working. Do not limit yourself. Do not make excuses, right? Do not bargain with yourself. Do not say, well, you know, I, may, I could probably do that, but I'm so busy. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You can set your mind to something and make the time for it when you decide it's important to you. And if you decide that it's not important to you, that is okay. That's totally okay. But I'm assuming that these five or six goals that we are wordsmithing and workshopping are incredibly important to you or you will not have written them down. So look at it and see, is this achievable? Is this realistic, right? If I have a very intense schedule and I have a surgery planned in February, is it realistic for me to say that I'm going to perform in March? Probably not. So don't set yourself up for failure, right? So this is like one of those that you have to be uh, very aware of yourself, very aware of your personal and schedule limitations, but I invite you to push the envelope. If it's something that really means something to you, if it's something is very important to you, you have more time and more energy than you realize, and you can accomplish more than you think. So don't sell yourself short. So we have specific, measurable, achievable, realistic. And now let's talk about this time sensitive thing, because this is also the piece that I think is always left off of goals, which also makes them less likely to be accomplished because you have forever to do it. So time sensitive. So if you're talking about your shimmies, you know, maybe you want to have some pretty good two minute, you know, uh, triple it shimmies without sweating by, you know, March 1st. 
And so just put that timestamp on there because it lights a little bit of a fire under your butt. And if you're anything like me, I like a little fire lit under my butt. Yeah, anyone else? Like if there's nobody holding you accountable, not even yourself, it's very easy to let these things just go, yeah? So time sensitive, try to make this time sensitive. If you're planning for your personal practice, you know, make this immediate if you can. Say like, once the kids are back to school on January 7th, I am in the studio for three 30 minute sessions a week. You know, once a week for 10 minutes, whatever you can make, whatever is going to be your goal. Just make that happen, right? So now you have a smart goal. You've word shopped, wordsmithed your goal so that it's something that is specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time sensitive. So it's way more likely to happen, yeah? Where do we go now? So now is where the rubber really hits the road. This is where you start to make the plan to make your goal a reality. Yeah, so you need to start to break it down into small pieces. Oftentimes these goals look sort of gigantic, right? Like say the goal is, I am going to perform a choreography in the June Student Showcase. And you're like, oh God, you're almost paralyzed with the idea. You've never done it before. You don't know where to begin. Like, so you have to start breaking it down into tiny bite-sized pieces. Whose choreography? Are you going to perform your own that you create? Are you going to perform one that your teacher has taught you? Are you going to perform something that you've learned online in a class? You know, like what choreography? Let's say you are going to learn someone else's choreography for this first time around. You don't want to have to choreograph it yourself. So you have to decide, okay, well, I need to pick the choreography. I need to look online and find an instructor that I like. <laughs> and pick a choreography to learn, right? So you need to pick the choreography. You need to purchase said choreography. You need to work on said choreography, right? And then you need to costume the choreography. You need to dress rehearsal the choreography. Maybe you want to meet with your personal instructor to work on that choreography. Write down all of these steps because then you can take them in bite-sized pieces instead of putting the entire elephant in your mouth all at once, right? Which doesn't taste good and it kind of hurts your jaw. So I want you to look at these in little pieces and then say, okay, our student night is on June 15th, just pulling a random date out. So if I want to be like done and just running and running, running my choreography for a month before the, the, the student night, by May 15th, I will have it finished. I will have learned the whole thing and have my costume in hand so I can just run it for the last month. Wouldn't it be good if we were also on top of things? I am not often on top of that, that well, but you can be, you can be with this plan. So if I'm gonna be done by May, well, that gives me five months. This is fantastic. Maybe I take the month of January to kind of look around online at different courses, different teachers, different styles, different choreographies, get some sneak previews and decide which choreography really calls to me. This will all vary depending on what you know about yourself as far as how long it takes you to learn a choreography. Let's say a four minute choreography, right? So you start looking around and you say, I could probably learn a four minute choreography in three months, right? Because if you've got three months, that's 12 weeks, that's less than you know, 30 seconds every week. And so you can say in January, I'm shopping around, I'm looking for what I want. And by the end of January, I'm going to purchase said choreography. And then I'm going to begin the process of working on it. And I'm going to dedicate, you know, 90 minutes a week. Let's keep going with that one. 30 minute segments, three times a week to working on this choreography. And sometime in April, I want to meet with my teacher to go through details of it so that by that May 15th deadline, I am set, you know, costume wise, are you buying it? Are you having it made? Maybe once you get a flavor of the choreography and a feel for it, maybe sometime, you know, in early March, you'll start looking for that costume. So when you break it down into these bite-sized pieces, you have all these little tasks that you do and you know the order that they need to be done and you know when they need to be done by, which makes it way easier for you to do than to think about like this whole massive thing you're attempting to you're attempting to accomplish does that make sense so once you've gone and done all this put it in your calendar whether you have a paper calendar which i love or a digital calendar something on your phone a poster on your wall if it's a really big something you're working towards i invite you to make it 
something that you look at daily, something that's just kind of always staring at you, reminding you what you need to be doing, because the more visual it is, the more likely it is to stay here in our brain, right? If we hide it, we might forget about it out of sight, out of mind. So keep it in the forefront of your mind in whatever way works for you so that you continue to remind yourself the path you're on and where you need to be. If you'd like a little bit more accountability, get a friend or loved one involved. This works for me quite well where I say to a friend, okay, look, here's what I'm working on. I'm doing this new thing, this new performance piece, and I'm performing it in June. I'm going to dance it for you in May, right? And so now that person is watching you, they're checking in on you, they're making sure that you're doing this, and come May, you have someone to be accountable to. And then you can even ask your teacher to check in with you or maybe schedule a couple of private classes to check in something short, 30 minute private class. I want to show you what I've done so far and get your comments and feedback on it. That way you have to do it and you don't leave it all to the end. I feel like we all have a little bit of a procrastinator in us, or maybe some of us have a lot of procrastinator in us. And while yes, you can get things done at the last minute, is that the most enjoyable way to do it? I believe that most of us came to the dance because it brings us great joy and satisfaction. So don't let your dance goal become a source of stress for you. That sucks the joy out of everything. And that is a very, very sad thing. So I invite you as you begin to put together these goals, as you start to look at the whys, keep the why in mind because that will keep you going through it. Even if you start to feel a little overwhelmed. Why are you doing this? And if it ceases to become fun, I always say this to my students, reevaluate what you're doing, right? If it is not enjoyable to you, why are you here? If you're trying to work through something that is going to be a bit painful in the process, realize that and push forward. But if your priorities have changed, accept that as well. It is okay. I give you permission to reevaluate your priorities and your goals regularly throughout the year and you should do them. Once you set your sights in January, that is not the end all be all course. Captains of a ship are continually reevaluating their path to make sure that they land where they want to on the opposite shore. And if we don't continually tweak what we're doing, we may find ourselves five or six months down the road working on an old goal that no longer serves us. So that's kind of the last piece of this puzzle. Once you create that goal and break it down into pieces, you've made sure that it's smart, you've written it well, you've broken it down into pieces, you've put those pieces in your calendar. Sit back and think about it every once in a while. Reevaluate your goal every few months and make sure one, that you're on track and two, that the track you're on is the track you'd like to be on. I would love the opportunity to connect with you more about your goals. What is it that you're working on? Write to me, post below, let me know. And if you would like, we can check in with each other throughout the year and help keep each other accountable as the year goes on to make sure we don't lose sight of what's important to us in our dance and otherwise. I look forward to being by your side in whatever way I can to help you accomplish your goals and to come to a dance that brings you great joy and great pride. Thank you so much for being part of my online belly dance family. Happy Hey there, fabulous dancer. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then you are going to love the seven day beginner belly dance jumpstart, which is a free program aimed to get you into a belly dance movement practice with ease and grace confidence and joy. Come and find out what people all over the world have discovered in the ancient art of belly dance in this free seven day program. Once a day for seven days, I'm going to send you a belly dance tutorial. It's short and sweet, 10 to 15 minutes max, and it'll get you up and dancing every single day to develop a strong and positive movement practice in your life. I would love to invite you and I would love to see you there. You can find it at sahirabellydances.com slash jumpstart. I look forward to sharing the dance floor with you soon.